All right, guys, in this episode, I'm going to talk about a famous uh, revenue equivalence uh, theorem. I'm not going to prove it, um, but here is the statement. Uh, so any auction with independent private values with a common distribution in which the number of bidders are the same and the bidders are risk neutral, the object always goes to the buyer with the highest value, the bidder with the lowest value expects zero surplus, yields the same expected revenue. Um, so the first price, second price, third price auctions, all pay auctions, English and the Dutch auctions, which I uh, briefly talked about in the introduction, these auctions are all revenue equivalent, again under the assumption that uh, uh, there's an independent private values, all right? Uh, the common distribution, meaning everybody uh, sort of receives his or her signal from the same probability distribution function F, remember? Uh, the bidders are risk neutral. So if the bidders are risk averse, for example, this theorem is not true or this statement is not true. Well, here, this is very important. The object always goes to the buyer with the highest value. All these auctions ensure that the bidder with the highest value gets the object. So those auctions are efficient, but some auctions are not, do not satisfy this property. For example, the Chinese auction, remember, again, I mentioned in introduction, uh, you know, whatever you bid, uh, the, everybody still has the likelihood of winning the object because your probability of winning is your bid divided by the sum of all uh, bids. So therefore, uh, with some positive probability, actually the winner may be the buyer with, uh, uh, with not the highest valuation, okay? And again, the bidder with the lowest value expects zero surplus. You may say, well, hell yeah, the, the, if you have the lowest value, you're gonna lose for sure. Um, then why should you get a positive surplus? Well, here you may not get positive surplus, but you may get negative surplus, all right? For example, if you have, um, uh, what is it? If you have uh, a reservation price, meaning everybody should uh, pay some fixed fee uh, to enter to the auction, all right? So before you make a bid, everybody has to pay a flat fee and then enter the auction and then make a bid uh, on top of the uh, uh, reservation price. If this is the case, for example, even though you lose the auction, even though you bid zero, okay, you make no payment whatsoever, you may actually still end up negative surplus, okay? So the, those uh, auction situations are not going to be part of this theorem. Um, and again, the, in, the, in the numerical examples, I will just show that the expected revenues of the uh, first and the second price auctions are the same. Uh, that makes sense in terms of first and English. Remember, they're strategically equivalent the equilibrium of the first and the equilibrium of the English auction are the same. And so therefore the revenues uh, deduced by those or sort of calculated in those equilibrium are also going to be the same. And well, again, although I'm not going to prove it, uh, I think uh, you got the idea. The idea is if you remember the uh, numerical example in the first and the second price auction I did in the previous episode, uh, the, the, the G function, remember the likelihood of winning the object given that you have the signal S. So there your, your, your bid B of S basically beats all the other bids or the second highest bid. So the thing is, as long as the bid function, the equilibrium bid function is increasing and as long as it is the same for everybody, well then we can just cancel them out because the B, uh, the, the bidding function is going to be linear because B will be uh, linear. And the linearity uh, is actually guaranteed, oops, sorry, when we have risk neutrality, that's very important. You know, the common distribution, the independent private values, etc. cetera. Uh, however, if we don't have risk neutrality, then the bidding function may actually not be uh, uh, linear. Okay, so that's, that's one important. Now remember in the 
um, uh, expected revenue calculations in the first price auction, we said those Bs will actually, they, they were just constants. So those constants will cancel each out. And so that is equivalent to saying S is beating uh, Y. And so we had the equivalent. And again, uh, because B, if B is not linear, uh, well, then we're not going to be able to say this. And once again, so, I mean, I think you can uh, sort of feel uh, how we can prove this uh, thanks to all those assumptions, neutrality. Well, clearly the common distribution, independent private values are, are important because uh, thanks to independent private values and uh, common distributions, we can calculate G as F to the power N minus one uh, S, remember? And so if, for example, we don't have common distribution or if the independent private, uh, if we don't have independent private values, things are going to be much more complicated. All right. Um,